Hey guys, it's Hannah and Dawn here at Coldesi, and we have a really fun video for you guys today. We are doing a direct-to-film printer production run with our DTF 24H4, so our four-head printer. Dawn here is going to go through the printing. We are going to print 40 transfers, 20 for the front of the shirt and 20 for the back of the shirt. We're really only making 16 shirts, but we are printing some extras in case I mess up, because after Dawn does the printing, I'm going to take the transfers to our other showroom and put them on the shirts for you guys. So Dawn, take it away. Let's get this printing. You see I've got a tail of about two feet or so that so that I have a bit of a lead in as we come into here. You see right there, I've also done a nozzle check on my printer. Things are looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and send the job across. Going two across. You know, there's a stripe down the right side of the print. Hannah just gave me a look in the, she, like she's not seen that before. That's a, what's called a wetting strip. So what that does is every time that the print head comes back this direction to, towards us, it's actually gonna print with all of the nozzles into a strip. That way when you're doing long runs, which you are prone to do with DTF, if you do a long run, it doesn't use magenta. And then you go to another job that does have magenta in it. If that magenta has been sitting there on the print head with not being printed for 20, 30, 40 minutes, it might dry out. But because we're printing on that little strip every time it comes back and forth, you're going to actually make sure that the head doesn't dry in, in certain nozzles. I've seen it when I print white only. When I go to print the next color job, everything's color. I mean, every color is, is gone except for the white. All right, we'll go ahead and pause the printer at this point because we're at the stage when we're going to start to transition. You can see in here, pull this out a little bit, you can see it. You can see there are two red dots down in there. Those two red dots are going to become the, the, the items that will control our belt dryer. Basically, there's a powder loop, as you'll see. We want that powder loop to stay between those two dots as much as possible. So what it will do is when it goes below the bottom dot, it's going to turn the belt on to start taking the media through the belt. And then what it will do is when it gets to the top, it'll pause again, allowing the printer to catch up with it. One thing I do need to grab is my handy dandy Teflon sheet. We'll use that during the process of transitioning to the belt. It's a good idea to keep it on the right printer when you're doing it. What I will do at this point is I'm actually gonna pick up the bottom of this film. I'm gonna bring it up gently because I don't wanna disrupt the print. And there's a metal bar here that will, we're gonna literally attach this to with these rare earth magnets which come with the printer and these are going to hold i want to make sure it looks like it's, it's nice and straight which it is i'm going to go ahead and put some powder manually put some powder in here just to start priming it and that's going to start to build my powder loop so i'm going to go ahead and unpause the printer now and i'm going to go ahead and turn my spiral on which is going to start circulating that powder through the system. You see, I'm starting to see the, the two dots down inside. I'm gonna let it get a bit further because I'm actually gonna be pulling some of the film up onto the belt. Usually I'll let it get down just about to the point it's on the screen, there it goes. I'm gonna pause the printer one last time. Now I'm gonna take the Teflon sheet. I'm gonna put it in there. The reason we do that is that extends the vacuum down in the initial stages because we want it to hold the film as we go through here. 
So it will actually fall out of the back end, not a big deal at the end. That way we get a good hold down at the front. We don't have to use a bunch of film up front uh, that would be wasted film. In essence, in this case, the Teflon sheet is filling the bill of the extra powder. I mean, the extra film for it. I'm gonna pull this up, slide it up underneath of here, a decent amount, try to get it centered on the belt. And you will get a little bit of walk on this occasionally on the belt, but it's something we adjust on the fly. It's not a big deal. Last thing I will do is I have a button over here that says vacuum. I'm gonna turn the vacuum on. You probably hear it now, as you can see, it's holding the film. I'm also gonna turn the powder on its auto. So this is periodically gonna drop powder as well as we're running. And we're gonna go ahead and put the belt onto automatic step. So what will happen is when this prints down and lowers below that bottom dot, it's gonna start this belt in motion. So I'm gonna unpause the printer. And by the way, we're, we're almost 40% of the way through this print job of these 20 images already. And so you can see one of the things you want to do when you have a DTF printer, you want to run all your jobs at one time. So this time that I just spent here up front, it's just happening once for maybe a three or four hours worth of printing as opposed to once for every single job. Last step we're going to take, by the way, is going to turn on our powder clear. You'll see that flappers are beating the back of the film and they're actually knocking off any excess powder. In a perfect world, these will almost perfectly sync up. You will occasionally see the, the belt stop, but for the most part on the, the forehead, when you're printing full bleeds like this, full, full width, you are not going to have many times the belt isn't running. So, one thing that will occasionally happen during a run, you'll see you're walking a little bit on your belt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off the vacuum, just for a second. I'm gonna pull this over more centered on the belt, turn my vacuum back on, that way it centers up on my belt. What this will do is if you're already all the way through, what you're gonna see is that that's actually gonna cause a little bit of a ripple back here. You'll hear a whistling sound. Coming off the back of the printer now, there's my Teflon sheet. What I'm gonna do is as this is coming off, I have some tape that I've stuck here. I would keep a handy roll of cellophane tape right here. Just a couple of strips. So I'm going to use these to tape off and engage with the roll take up that we have down here. It's recommended that you have a little more space than we have back here. <laughs> but you work with what, what you've got. Down here we have the take up roll. I've already put a, an empty core on it. You do want to save your empty cores. And you see, these are beautifully crystallized. Now I've got the take up roll started. Snug that up. Now that's just going to take what it's given. It's not going to pull this out of the belt, but as it feeds through, You can see it's dropping the powder periodically here. And now that belts, it's walked up to the point that it's done. And I also have another job that's starting. So there was a little pause. This is the secondary print. This is the swatches print. 
So we'll see the belt will start pretty shortly here. So we printed the first half of our job, which was the 20 teddy bears, and now we've got the 20 swatch sets going. Twenty percent of the way printed through the swatches. So in essence, we're about sixty percent of the way through our entire print job. Fifty percent of the way through printing the swatches. Ninety percent of the way through printing. All right, the printer is done printing at this point. So at this point, I become the feed mechanism. So let me show you how we finish a job. Once the job is finished printing, I'm going to manually advance the media. So we're going to need a lead out just like we had a lead in. I'll usually advance it till it drops down below the, uh, the red light to keep the film feeding. A little bit further again. This is where my magnets are going to come into play. Take your magnet, lay it on top of the film. So we're at a point now where the belt's about to stop. There, the belt is stopped. I'll let the belt stop. I'm going to take a slitter, pull the film down snug, cut off the film. And before you go anywhere, you can go ahead and let go of that because the magnet has it. 
So what I'm going to do is put my hand down on the film, lift and lower the rollers so that we make sure it's aligned for the next job. I'm going to go ahead and remove my, my magnet. At this point, I'm the one feeding the film. I'm also going to turn off the top, which is our preheat. This is being turned off now. I will be slowly feeding the media forward. And then what we will do in essence as this goes along, we'll start turning things off as we no longer need them. At this point, I can go ahead and turn my powder off because I have plenty of powder down in my loop. Turn my spiral off on the top. I don't need that. I'm going to let it start feeding it up until I see it stop, which means I'm at the top of my loop right there at stop. I'm going to turn it from auto to manual, which means the belt's just going to go ahead and run on its own now because I'm getting ready to drop the end of the media. I'm going to watch it and make sure it runs through until all that. Now we're past all of the print so I can actually turn the powder clear off. So now the only items that I have on, the vacuum for the belt, the belt itself, the heat for the belt, the fan back here. This fan has a two-fold two purpose. It cools the media as it comes off. All right, that's cool. But secondarily, it's taking that heat that it's drawing off of, it's recirculating it back there, making it more efficient. You can see where the roller is getting Pretty full here. We are just about done. So to give you an idea, from the time that the print leaves the printer until it comes out here is about six and a half minutes. So once you get in the flow, you're going to figure that you're getting a complete cycle through continual. So the idea is the printer doesn't really ever stop printing when you're doing a run. The, the dryer is going to cycle on and off and we have comfortably you can get 145 linear feet per hour. We've had images that we have run or jobs we've run where we're getting closer to 152, 155 range as well. It just really depends on how big the images are and whether you know you're at the start of a run. Obviously at the start, you're going to have less because you have the startup time. But while you're in the middle of a run, it's going to make up for it. Turn that off, we're done with the take up roller. Come back here, I'm gonna turn off my manual step for the belt, my vacuum for inside the belt, my dryer, the actual temperature. This is the evacuator that draws out and sends it over to our uh, fume extraction device we have on the other side. I'll turn that off in a minute here. But there you have it, we've run 40 images. I did the math on it. We ran 23 linear feet of film so Hannah will be able to tell you from the time from the camera of how long it took us to run that. Those are all ready. We're going to take them. Hannah's going to take them back and press these on. We're going to send them to the FSU textile testing lab. We're going to get some good results for you all on what the wash testing is for these, these prints. 
All right, guys, so we're here in the other showroom with our printed transfers. Now, you'll remember Don printed out 40 transfers. He did 20 of our panda designs and 20 of the swatches. But for the production, we are only making 16 shirts here. We printed a couple extras just in case we messed up. So we have four different styles of shirts and four of each style. So that would be 16 shirts total. And you'll see I already cut out my transfers. Now when you're doing big production like this with DTF, you wanna have a big cutter or a big table where you can use a nice straight edge and get these all cut up really fast. So I'm gonna just jump into the production here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my first shirt on the press. While I'm doing this, I am talking, so keep that in mind when you think about how long this is taking. I'm also not a professional. Um, I just make videos for you guys. So it might take me a little bit longer than the seasoned t-shirt pro here. But for the first thing is I'm gonna put my shirt, my transfer, then going to press for 10 seconds at a high pressure, and we're doing 300 to 305 degrees. So a couple more seconds here. Now this film is a hot peel, so this is really great for production when this is done. I'm just gonna take this right off, put it to the side, grab my finishing sheet, and press again, but this time only for five seconds. So if you've seen any of our other productions runs we've done recently, we've just done the front of the shirt. As you can see, we're doing front and back right now. So I'm gonna flip this over, do the back side, if you wanna get a um, good time estimate of how long just the fronts would take, well, you'll just simply divide the time that's taking us for this in half. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab my swatch, put that on top, press for 10. As I start doing this, I'm gonna get in the flow of it a little bit better. So I will probably stop talking a little bit just so I can get into full production mode. First shirt is done, put it over to the side, and we're gonna move on. So for our shirts here, the first ones I have up are next level blend shirts. Really great feel to these, really nice and lightweight. Something I've really been loving about DTF is these transfers really stick on to any fabric. Um, so you're not limited here to cotton or polyester, you can do just about anything. I'm gonna loosen up this just a little bit. I felt like it was getting a little tight. Don't need the finishing sheet for this step quite yet. All right, something else that's really great about this, as you can see, the only mess that I have right now in this transfer process is just my fill. So really easy clean up there. And as you can tell, I am utilizing the presets on the Hotronics Fusion. So I have it programmed in to do the 10 seconds and then the five seconds. This really helps out in production, you guys. So highly recommend a heat press that has those programmable um, presets.
already on our last next level T here. I have my transfers, as you can see, I have them facing down. This is just helping me grab them a little bit more so you can see the transfers from the front here. Recognize these from the beginning of the video. Right, so now we're moving on to the district perfect tries. Something else that's really great about this process is um, these shirts, they're all using the same time temperature pressure. So I'm not having to change anything here. I just get to use the whole, the same thing the whole time. So again, you guys, while you're watching, just you know, think of ways as production um, that this could definitely be sped up is two heat presses going at the same time is always a really great option, especially when you're doing big production. Unlike some of the other methods, this is definitely the type of production pressing where you're not really gonna get anything else done around your shop. You're kind of just gonna be at the heat press for this time. But as you can tell, it's moving really quick, especially that last five second press is, is super fast. So just take a couple hours out or a couple minutes out of your day to do all your pressing um, and you should be good to go. And this standard finishing sheet I'm using here, as you can tell, you get a lot of presses out of these. They do come in a pack of, I think about 50 um, on ColemanCompany.com and you get tons of uses out of them. So they last you a really long time. You'll wanna replace them when they start to get like uh, burnt looking or just worn out or get wrinkles and stuff like that. But I'm gonna use the same one for this whole job here.
whoops, dropped a film there. I'm definitely not as strong with my left hand, guys. Just tried to push that down with the full pressure on my left hand, and it was not as easy. Um, so these kind of things are definitely gonna depend on what hand dominant you are, for sure. All right. District perfect try. We are really rocking and rolling here, you guys. Yep, just one more of the District Perfect Try left. Another really great heat press for DTF is the Geonite line of heat presses. We also use those um, in our other showroom. And then next we're going to be moving on to, I believe our district perfect weight tee. So if you've ever gotten a sample from us here at Cold Desi before, you'll recognize this next tee because it's one of our go-tos. It's 100% cotton and it is really nice and soft. And it has a really rich black color to it as well, you'll notice. Try and pick up some speed here. Now that I'm starting to get comfortable with the process. All right, so we're officially at our halfway point. We've done eight of our shirts and we have eight more to go. Two more styles. All right, so here's that District Perfect Weight, also called uh, the DT-104 if you search on ColemanandCompany.com. We're also, um, this heat press obviously doesn't have the auto pop-up feature, but as you can see, I'm doing a lot of uh, lifting up. So an auto pop-up feature would probably be really nice for this process. I would definitely probably recommend something like that. But we love the Hotronics just for some of our other machines and equipment here. So it's a great universal heat press. Okay. 
So as I'm doing all these, I'm kind of thinking about some of our other equipment here and thinking about DTG printing, which I love, really great method for decorating t-shirts. Um, but definitely you can tell by this production compared to that, huge difference. Um, so first you'll have to pre-treat your shirt. Then you have to heat press it to dry that pre-treat. Then you could print it. But then after that, you're still not done. You have to dry the shirt. So the ink is not dry after that. The DTF printer basically just kind of does that all in one for you. this we have one two three four five Another really popular decoration method that you may be thinking about while watching this, um, it might be sublimation. We also um, sell the sawgrass sublimation printers here at Coldesi. And while they are really great, really quick, just print, press, you're done, no finishing press or anything, keep in mind that sublimation only works on 100% polyester and white or light colored garments. So we literally would not be able to do this job with sublimation. And I don't know about you guys, but dark colored shirts, dark colored tees are probably my favorite. And I know that they're customers' favorites as well. So some limitations there for sure. But again, with sublimation and even with our um, other digital VFX system printers like the 8432 or our 560, you also have the advantage of doing hard surface goods. Um, so with the hard surface paper, with sublimation, you use um, polyester coated blanks. And um, the D our DTF printers, the DTF 24H2 and DTF 24H4 are not designed for hard surface goods. They're for t-shirts. our last district shirt here and then we're moving on to our Bella and canvas blends really popular um, brand of t-shirt there customers really love the Bella canvas and we're doing a let's see the blend is this is a cotton poly blend Got a little folded on itself there. Definitely want to make sure that you don't have the shirt folded on itself in any way. Could just create some uneven pressure and it could give you some issues. So you want a nice flat surface. 
but that's going to be with any t-shirt decoration method, of course. And I'm sure you guys are noticing on camera, these colors are super vibrant. Like they're really popping for sure. All right, so now we're moving on to our last four shirts. We are near the home stretch, guys. After this one, we just have two shirts left. So, almost there. And since you guys watching this video can only see it, you can't feel it, I will try to describe this for you guys. These prints are really, really super soft. They really don't have much of a hand to them. Of course, you're putting something on a shirt. So anytime you're putting something on top of fabric, I mean, you're gonna feel it. You know, it's not part of the shirt, but these are really soft. They're really nice and stretchy. Um, in fact, we have some videos where we've actually taken the print off of the transfer and stretched it about this far. So definitely um, really great washability for these. Perfect timing, we're just about done and I'm just about breaking a sweat here. Um, so we're making some good timing. Got a couple little wrinkles on the shirts at the end just because of where they were laying in my pile. Always recommend giving a good pre-press to all your shirts here. but this hot peel is just great for production. I am just flying through these right now.
All right, guys, so we've made it to our last shirt. Just one more to go. While we have this pressing here, I will ask Jess about how many minutes are we at here? About 26. Okay, about 26 minutes here. I've been talking and chatting and we're doing a front and a back of a shirt here. Keep that in mind. So just the front would be half of that. Um, so guys, this for production is really amazing. Um, definitely a really great high quality commercial machine if you're really serious about making shirts. Um, and making money with custom shirts. This is a great machine for you guys to look into. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, we did print these transfers on the DTF 24H4. So we printed these on our four head DTF printer, but then we also have the two head, the DTF 24H2 as well. So a little bit of um, different print times with those two machines, because of course, when you add more print heads, your print speed's gonna improve. Um, but the pressing time's gonna be the same, no matter what machine. Right, final five seconds. All right, guys, there we go. We have 16 finished shirts. We have four different styles and four of each. So we have a full job here, big full color print. These are about 10 and a half um, by 16 ish. So these are a big, nice sized print front and back full color, uh, super easy job. Just a couple minutes under the press total under the press, a couple seconds under the press each. So if you wanna learn more about making shirts and about production and production runs with the direct-to-film printers, just visit coldesi.com. And if you live chat with one of our pros, we can get all your questions answered.